Hey, good morning, everybody. This is Mr. Raider. Today, we're going to be looking at opportunity costs as it relates to personal finance and consider how opportunity costs influence our economic decision making. So for this opening question, I want you to think through uh, possible summer employment scenarios, right? So for the first job, it's at a pizzeria, uh, Joe's Pizza. You can work 40 hours a week for $400, right? And with the possibility of tips or Shake Shack, 20 hours a week for $260. And the question becomes which jobs would seem more appealing to you and why, right? So when we think back to that first lesson that we had about opportunity costs, opportunity costs exists because of scarcity, right? So there's choices that we have to make. And in this case, the two choices that we're really examining is the time spent working, right? And the money that we earn. And then what are we foregoing in terms of other productive activities uh, that we might want to do instead of working, that we're giving up or sacrificing in lieu of, of getting uh, more money, right? Because if you look at the actual numbers here, if we look at it in terms of pure dollars and cents, uh, Joe's Pizza is going to be about $10 an hour, right? You'll take the $400, you'll divide by the 40 hours. Likewise, you could do the $260 divided by the 20 hours and you're making uh, 13 uh, dollars an hour Shake Shack. So it is in theory more money, but because the hours are less overall, you would certainly make less money working at Shake Shack. And you also have to consider in this context, if it's a sit down eatery for the pizzeria and you're working as a waiter or a waitress or as a bus boy, you know, there's the opportunity to possibly earn tips, which could make the, the income potential that much higher at Joe's Pizza. But then you're also working full time, which limits your ability to do other things. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to this question that I had posed on Thursday. And I think it's a really important question because every single decision that you make in the field of economics requires trade-offs and it requires really balancing and weighing the kinds of decisions that you have to make so that you can better manage scarce resources. So for today's activity, we're just going to look at three possible summer jobs, kind of building what we did in the do now. Uh, you're going to look at the, each of the jobs in terms of their work hours, benefits, and the pay period. You know, some, some jobs you get a paycheck every week. Some jobs you get a paycheck every other week. Some jobs it's, it's bi-monthly. That's, that's the kind of job that Mr. Raider has. He knows that he's going to essentially be getting 24 paychecks throughout uh, the course of the year. 12 months, two paychecks, 24. Right? It's pretty clear. Uh, the benefits that you get in the pay period. So kind of look through, highlight, make notes, uh, pros and cons, and consider which of the three jobs you would want to pursue. So here are your three options. Option one is a pizzeria. 30 hours a week, $13.50 an hour. You get paid twice a month. And one additional benefit, they will offer you a free pizza pie every other week. At the second job, which frankly at this point in 2020, I think they'd be out of business, We'll learn about something called creative destruction towards the end of the year. With online streaming services, there aren't really any DVD rental stores anymore, but I still think the worksheet is useful, so I'm going to have you go through it. So at this job, it's 35 hours a week. However, you're going to have to work evenings, and you're going to have to work on the weekends. Uh, the wage is only $11.75 an hour. However, you do get paid every week, so that, that certainly is a benefit. Uh, and likewise... You get three DVD rentals, and the second component is really important. So I put in quotes so you would be able to think about it. The job's off the books. So in this job, you're not going to pay any taxes. So keep that in mind because the $13.50 an hour, when you actually do the math, if you take $13.50 and you multiply it by 0 .68, assuming that you keep 68% of your after-tax income, it only comes out to $9.18 an hour. So you would actually be making more money at the DVD shop. And then the pet store, 40 hours a week, Tuesday through Saturday, daytime only, so you don't have to work uh, any evenings. Hourly wage is pretty low, $9.25, and you get paid every week. Uh, and another benefit with this job as well, it is an off-the-books uh, job. You don't have to pay taxes. There are no paychecks. So another way to kind of visualize this is to kind of think through the pros and cons of the three options and then pick the job that you would want to work at. Once you've determined the job that you want to work at, I actually want you to do a little math with your calculators and figure out, okay, how much money are you going to make? What, what's the gross pay going to look like? And what's the net payment going to look like? 
So again, this is the same chart that we looked at in our last lesson. You'll take the number of hours at that job, multiply it by the amount per hour, and you get the gross pay. You then need to take gross pay, subtract all of the mandatory tax-based deductions, and you are left with your net income. And that really kind of brings us to the end of the lesson. Uh, two questions to consider. One is for the lesson and one is for the unit as a whole. How does opportunity cost affect your decision to pursue employment in the future? Consider what kind of jobs might be available and how that would influence your decision to get a job. And then the bigger question, again, the unit essential question, how do our individual economic decisions allow us to successfully manage or ineffectively manage our scarce resources? So if we don't make smart decisions, how that will affect our economic bottom lines. All right, everybody, hope you all have a great day, and we'll check back in next time.